Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. New handreel, Kabuya. Made by Merkwares out of Eagle Mountain in Utah. This one's made from uh, bamboo plywood, which is actually a good thing because of the multi directional layout of plyboard will make it much stronger than some types of regular wood. So the pressure of it is laid out. Reminds me of sort of a set of knuckle dusters. So, super light. Now this one weighs in at 56 grams, which is a tad under uh, 2 ounces. And uh, it's 150 by 80 mil by 11 mil ply, plus this little handle is being glued on, so a bit thicker there of course. So, the advantage of this over a regular hobo reel is the amount of line retrieved each turn. So from experience, it is possible to work this one, a small spinner with this, but I really need to be standing upstream of the water flow, cast it across, and you know let the water help me to make the spinner work. So a spinner like this takes a fair bit of line speed, which is really the advantage of having a spinning reel, of course. So this one retrieves uh, 280 millimeter of line, every wrap, well it is 11 inches, so that it should be able to handle quite nicely. So looking at this compared to my old hobo reel which I've been using for about 10 years, <coughs> that's actually uh, nearly 100 grams but it is loaded with tackle. So the advantage of course is this is a complete unit. It's ready to roll. It's wrapped with fishing line, survival line, all the gears inside it's completely drilled through and I get this I've got everything I need in one spot but there is some noise not a lot so the way it's made with wood but you do have to hold all your tackle in that and other ones yeah, get this sort of noise yeah so this will require a separate sort of tackle box now it's come pre-spooled with I think 25 or 30 yards of line and a little uh, casting Ball. and I've had a bit of play with it in the backyard annoyed the cat next door and it casts quite well now it's interesting it sits in your hand so we've all had the problem of wind drawing line off the spool so it only requires you to put your finger there then make your cast and uh, off she comes so I want to expand my fishing repertoire with sort of hobo gears now for years this is this is a list of the tackle I've been carrying with this fellow. So I'm going to expand on that and make a dedicated little tackle box for this and for basically for fresh water in any circumstances. That will complement my other hobo reels and we'll see how that progresses. But opening up I thought I'd show you as it comes in the box. I'm actually very impressed. Anyway guys, if you want to know what's coming up I'll be building a, a tackle kit to suit this uh, fish, fishing reel. I've got some new line, some leader material, hooks. That's what's coming up. Okay guys, I've removed the uh, line that it came with. Now there was 82 wraps of the uh, line from the, uh, the factory, if you want to call it that, on this. Now I've put on 200 wraps by the, um, by the length. So that'll give me of 280 mil, so that'll give me 36 meters. It also means that this 300 meter spool of line will give me eight complete refills, rather than sort of top shotting the reel as I use line. Now it's thin stuff. It lays really nice. So it's only 2.7 mils thick. The uh, expensive fluorocarbon I want in 10 pound is 0.3 mil, so it's actually slightly thicker, which I'm surprised by the way. Anyway, that's the line sorted out. So I've got a, uh, a weighted bobber on there. Now I've seen some online that you can fill with water as a casting weight, which would be better than carrying a weighted bobber all the time, because obviously there's water available if you're fishing. So I'm going to try and get some of those. They don't seem to be common here in Australia. And then we'll work on our uh, tackle and some basic uh, rigging techniques, I think, to finish it off. Well guys, I thought I'd start off with a, uh, a hobo fishing tackle wish list. And I had the old, a friend of mine's words echoing my ears. 
the goldfish always fills the bowl. Meaning that if you get a huge tackle box or a backpack, you're going to fill it. <coughs> so, thinking back on <coughs> what I've been carrying for the last 10 years and how many times it's come up short, it's not that many. I was caught out in Alaska, in southern Tasmania, where there was a huge uh, hatch on and <coughs> the trout weren't looking at um, baits. They, they just wanted uh, flies. So anyway, <coughs> I thought I'd set up this wish list and then either set up a dream tackle box, and I'm thinking somewhere in this size range, any bigger than that and it's not going to make it into my uh, day pack, that's for sure. <coughs> and my other thought is a PVC pipe, this is a bit of a So what I would like in a kit is hooks. Because with line and hooks you're fishing, without line and hooks you're not fishing. So good quality, at least the bait holder hooks. So that means they've got barbs on them, so if you're catching grasshoppers and worms and stuff, they tend to stay on. So in sizes 2 to 10, and maybe a couple of really small ones for catching bait. Sinkers. <coughs> so, split shot. Maybe one or two of these smaller uh, casting weights, because I do like drop shot rigs. Swivels. Now, mostly I use swivels to stop floats. So, uh, these are a, a clip-on casting float. Now, I have ordered some water-filled ones. It'll take a few weeks to arrive to me in Australia. So, I'll be interested to see how they go, because they actually twist. They have a plastic tube in through the middle, <coughs> and they lock on as these clip-on. So, I might need swivels. For joining fluorocarbon to line, I can do it with knots. So, uh, that's the casting float. So, fluorocarbon leader. I've got some. So, um... That's an option. <clears throat> bait. So, I've never really used this uh, power bait stuff. I've got a couple of jars of it to give it a shot. So, uh, some smaller container for uh, holding that. <clears throat> Maybe some send up a snap lid container to carry three or four of them. <clears throat> Lures. So, as I mentioned before, I've been caught out in the past by not having any trout flies. So, maybe a nymph or two. A woolly bugger, maybe a uh, salmon egg, maybe three or four, they don't take up much room. And with the water fill bobber I can fish those. Some micro jigs, like the trout magnet ones, and one of those little floats to go with it. Something like that. A spinner, and a minnow type lure. And we get down to the box. <clears throat> so I'm thinking I'm going with two. Probably a plastic box around this size and a simple tube that I can keep with the handrail so that becomes a grab and go kit just like my little hobo reel but what I've done I've made a, uh, a little tube out of 15 millimeter retic PVC so we use this stuff for garden watering here in Australia so um, I've managed to get all of these contents into this so I'll uh, I'll put you a picture in so basically It's got two very small jigs, a spinner, a rebel crawfish, hooks in sizes 1 to size 12, some split shots, some ball sinkers, a, uh, one float on the reel, and I'm going to put I've got one trout magnet float in here, the other end. So one of those in there. So that'll give me two floats. <coughs> I'm going to wrap it in the center here with fluorocarbon. I'm going to find out if I can use tape on the effect of fluorocarbon and some swivels. So that will give me a nice kit that locks in place so I can slide in my pocket as per usual. And of course I'll take, I'll take that out to fish with it. Yeah? So I think that's quite a, a good little job. Then we'll move on to the dream box. Okay guys, <coughs> so I'm still waiting on some bits and pieces at the moment with the lack of flights here in Australia. It can take about six weeks to get anything by post. So I'm happy with the micro kit I made for the Kabuya. So I decided to build a, um, a dream box to cover all my hobo fishing reels, which I have quite a few. So I chose this Flambu, probably saying it wrong. Apparently the, the box is impregnated to uh, slow down rust and stuff. 
It's a nice well made box with a good solid snap on it and it's a bit thicker than most of my other boxes as in deeper. So uh, narrower in these directions but <coughs> deeper which I think will be a better fit. <coughs> so it's probably a bit bigger than I need but that gives me extra room <coughs> to load out if I go on trips. So hopefully next year I'm heading to uh, southern Tasmania again and this will be coming with me. So following my wish list I've got heaps of small sinkers, chop shot sinkers, split shot because they're really difficult to make in the field. It is possible to make floats of course. <clears throat> anyway I've got one clip on float in here at the moment. I'm still waiting on my water filled bobbers. I've got one minnow or one spinner. So oh yeah, there's plenty of room for me to load out. I've got a selection of wet and dry flies. At the moment I've got them pinned into a uh, disposable ear, ear plug. I need to find a better way of storing those. <coughs> I've got hooks from size 1 to size 12. So plenty of those. I've got a small spool of uh, fluorocarbon leader. This was a brute to get on this spool. All my hooks are divided by safety pins in different sizes. The swivels in here, a few. <coughs> I've got a couple of sets of uh, trout magnet jigs which I'm only just getting the uh, the grip on but uh, they're useful as jigs, lures, the tails separately even there <coughs> I think they'll be a, uh, a great addition so relatively new for me so uh, nice little box it appears to be the well made <coughs> and it was about twice the price of this one so relatively everything's expensive in Australia. So I'll remove the sticker. So I think this will be a, a good kit. It'll it'll complement all of my hobo reels. Each one is in itself a kit. And uh, <coughs> this will complement them all really well. Anyway guys, hope you appreciated this one. I'll uh, see you next time. And if you like to subscribe it helps me out greatly. We'll see you next time.